The last thing I wanted to show you before we actually go uh, install our new digital thermostat in the actual unit is how you can uh, debug and use the serial monitor window to see what's going on. So I've hooked this up to the USB that also provides power and I put my little note card down here which shows you that this side is to turn it off, this side is for air conditioning, and that guy is for heat, and if you remember that one doesn't do anything. So we connect it to uh, the, our, our USB to the Arduino, we can turn on the serial monitor, and I wanted to show you what's happening here. So it's returning this DS180B20, which is the uh, I2C temperature probe lingo and then what it's doing here is just looping through and reading to us the temperature and the time. Here I zoomed in and I'll restart the Arduino so you can see what it looks like when it first starts up. Outputs the address and then it starts reading off the Fahrenheit and the time. I'm going to put my finger over the temperature sensor which will cause it to heat up and you'll see the temperature rise. There we go, 78, 80, 82. 84. Pretty cool. You can blow on it to usually to cool off a little. Doesn't cool off quite as quickly, but you can see it's dropping back down to 82 and 80. Now you're not going to see the servos fire right now because we set our uh, time to check to 300,000 milliseconds, which is every five minutes. So let me change that to every five seconds and we'll show the servos firing. You definitely want to reduce that time when you're debugging um, as obviously you don't want to wait five minutes for it to... Okay, I changed the time to check to 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds, and now I'll turn on the serial monitor. I will hit the restart button, and you can see the temperature is 77 degrees. So the way I've currently got it set is if it goes above 80, we should see the air conditioning turn on. So let me put my finger over the unit and Fahrenheit is 78, 80. There we go. Air conditioning just turned off. It also read that in the serial monitor if you can see that. If it cools back down to below 80, we should see the unit turn off. 82, 80. We're still at 80. Seventy eight should turn off. There it goes. Um. All right, the first thing I want to do is back off my set screws to make sure oops, that they are sort of flush so that I can position it um, properly and then snug them up. So I got those retracted. I just slide it in, and if you can see, I just center it. Um, the convenient thing about this setup is that the um, center axle of the servo actually sits right over the button that we're not using, which is the white one, which is the fan, and the uh, blue one, which is the other air conditioning. Another sort of funny thing about these is that the low cool and the high cool really isn't any different. Got it where I want it, so I'll just tighten up my set screws. This back guy's a little tricky. You also want to be careful when you're doing this if the unit has been on. Um, a lot of times there, like in this unit, there's a copper pipe right by the entrance of the uh, grill here and that can be very hot, so don't burn yourself. Not fun. Cool. So we're in there. So we've got it in there. It's mounted down. Um, the last thing, two things I wanted to talk about before we fire it up. Uh, one, the reason I also went with this design um, was it k keeps it simple. It also allows you to uh, retain manual control of your unit. Um, rather than build in a fancier feature, which I'm going to discuss at the end, um, you can simply unplug your Arduino and use the buttons. It you know, does require you to go around the edges a little, but uh, works fine. So you can keep the unit in place and you can still retain manual control. Um, that's one feature I like about this. The other thing which I think I would recommend doing, which I haven't done here um, just to keep it simple, is take your um, oops, take your temperature sensor guy right here and instead of leaving it on the breadboard inside the unit, solder it or clip it to a couple of wires and 
run it outside the unit and move it a few feet or even many feet away. Um, that way it's not getting a temperature reading from inside the unit or right next to where uh, the hot or cold air is being generated, but rather is reading a more ambient room temperature. Uh, that's probably a, a must do. I'm leaving it here right now just to give you an example of what's going on. So let's grab our power adapter and see. All right, got my power adapter plugged in to the wall. We just plug it into the Arduino. Well, let's just set it right down inside there. And I kept the code here on five seconds so that hopefully, there it goes, just turn it off. So if, if it turned it off, that means that the temperature is probably b certainly below 80. So let's put my finger on it and get this temperature sensor a little hot and we should see this guy fire and we should hear the air conditioning come on. There it goes. And if you can hear that, the air conditioning just came on. That should actually cool off the sensor and we should, there we go, just turn it off. Now obviously it did that so quickly for two reasons. One, um, I have it reading every five seconds and two, because my temperature sensor probe is inside the unit, it's obviously getting uh, sort of a feedback loop because it's getting cold so quickly. So once again, probably good to wire that up and get it outside the unit. Um, so that's it. We've now taken our stale, non-controllable uh, through wall unit and turns it into a digitally controlled um, thermostatic unit. Um, what I also like about this is uh, what I'm going to talk about here in a second, which is that once you've got the Arduino and the two servos, you can do a lot more cool things with this. So let's take a look at that.